Hey guys, I'm Dylan, and this is my Volkswagen Caddy pickup truck that I'm building. It has a V12 mid-engine in the back bed. The body has been widened eight inches down through the center. Um, it's getting all custom pushrod suspension in the back. It has all custom suspension in the front, a full roll cage, and yeah, now we'll do a walk around and show you a little more detail about everything. So this is my first project, getting the motor and the transmission attached. The motor is a V12 Toyota uh, 1GZ motor out of the Toyota Century from Japan. And the transmission is a Graziano out of a uh, Lamborghini Gallardo. So I had to mate the two together, so I made my own adapter plate by figuring out the whole bolt pattern from the bell housing of the uh, 1GZ to the Graziano and then I had to custom design a whole entire flywheel to mate to the crank of the 1GZ and have the flywheel or the uh, clutch from the Graziano bolt to it and have all the contact pads work and also the throw out bearing and all the distances work together. Now onto the body. The first thing I did was I cut the whole floor out, the whole firewall out, and I cut the whole door rockers apart. I fan off a new piece of sheet metal here to cap the rockers and make it stronger on the insides. Then I put a new floor in, nice eighth inch plates now I can weld the roll cage and the frame rails right to the floor and act as a good diaphragm. Then I did the firewall up front. And then after I had a new structure through, it was nice and strong, I put some bracing inside. And then I used a laser and I cut the whole truck right down the center. So then, after it was cut in half, I had to start the process of widening it. So up here is the European grill. I bought two European grills and I actually cut a section out of it because I couldn't cut this directly down the center because I would have cut the hood latch. So I went off to each side 11 inches, cut it out, and then I cut out a wider section from the second grill I had to stitch into here to make this new piece. Then I continued up through the center of the car. As you can see, I widened the cowl here, an eight inch strip that's all been flanged and uh, welded in. So with the firewall and the roof, the roof is actually not welded, that is panel bonded in, just because I didn't want any distortion or warping in the roof. And then you can see down through the center here, where the whole back's been rewidened. And then on the tailgate, I didn't want to cut apart the original tailgate with the Volkswagen font through it because I wanted to keep this original look to it. So I made these strips up that are only four inches wide on either side to continue widening it through here. And then as far as rust repair went, I replaced panels across the whole back below the window that were rotted out. And now it's one single piece, so there's no more seams in that. And then after I was done that, I moved on to the wheel tongues. So I held a wheel up about the height that I wanted and then figured out about how much suspension up travel I wanted. And I cut these tubs in. These are actually just trailer fenders and uh, stitched them all in all the way around, all the way, all, all four corners. And then I made these panels down here to kind of keep it looking like an original truck bay, but it's to the distances apart that I need for everything to fit. So after the body was all done being widened, the next step was to start the frame rails. The frame rails are made out of two by four by three sixteenths square tubing. And up here, I had the distances set by where I needed the upper control arms for the front suspension. Also, I had to have them set so that the radiator is going to go down into them and they are going to be the coolant lines running through the car to the motor. 
Now, the other reason that I, the distance was set was in here, I had to keep them as tight out as I could for the pedals to clear. So you weren't sitting too far into the center or past center in the seats. But then they had to kick in because they, in the back, they have to hold the motor and have motor mounts going across that. So I had to create these kicks in these. Now back here, they come straight all the way back and you can see the motor mounts, how they just come up on a slight angle to catch it now. Also, the reason that they had to be in so far was so now my, back, my lower A arms in the back can tie into them and I can have enough length on them to work correctly. So then after the frame rails were built, the next step was to start the roll cage. To start with the roll cage, the first piece we made was this rear hoop that goes up and across. Then instead of a normal cage where you have a halo, I wanted it tighter up here to the top windshield. So I did bars that came forward, down, and all the way up, down. And then I did just a single bar across because I felt that I could get it tighter to the windshield that way. Then I did piece of tubes that come through the body right here and all the way down to help brace the front. These tie into the fenders and are gonna have plates that brace the upper support for the uh, radiator support. And then we went backwards and we created this rear hoop here, all one piece, inch and three quarter DOM, that goes from the hoop all the way around the back, jogs around the fenders, all the way around and ties into the other side of the hoop. And then we did these bars coming down through here to help brace this hoop across. And then next, we're gonna start bars that come from up here and tie down to here to hold this, the um, rear shocks when they come off of the push rods for the cantilevered suspension. So that's gonna be the next priority along with rear suspension design. So to design my front suspension, I wanted to start with a very good base. So this is the front subframe out of a 2007 uh, Miata. I figured this would be the best handling suspension I could find for something lightweight like this truck. So I had to cut it in half and widen it to the width that I wanted my track width to end up for the truck. Then after I had it widened correctly, I took all the A-arms off of it as it is. I laid it on this piece of cardboard here and I transferred every one of the mounts down to it to figure out the geometry and the angles that everything went on. I also measured down the heights of everything to figure out my um, any dive and all that to all those degrees. So after I had that, I was able to draw a straight line through the uh, pivot points of the lowers, and I could now move the points to anywhere along that line to create the same geometry and the same caster gate. So from there, I drew the entire A arm on AutoCAD, and I created a plate that had slots and clips that went into it to design and fabricate my lower A-arms. Here's the plate that I designed, right here. And as you can see, it held my ball joint cup right here correctly at the right angle down. It held my hind joints on both ends, and see these have tabs and slots where they lock into the frame right into here to hold everything exactly where they needed to be. Then I had my three starting points and I connected the tubes to them. Then after I had the one side done with this setup, I was able to cut the tabs off, flip the plate over and weld them in to create an identical mirror opposite of it for the other side of the car. So here's the bottom A-arm, all fabricated and done. It uh, ties to the frame rails there, and you can see I have my ball joint here, and the cup is actually on a slight angle to be able to go into the upright from the Miata correctly. And then this bar here going across is what the shocks will eventually tie to, to go up to up here to mount. 
And now, up here, I decided to use the stock Miata upper A-arm just out of ease of simplicity for it. And then you can see the angle here for your anti-dive to work correctly, which is also copied right off of the Miata subframe. Now, if you come around to the front, or the front, you can see that the lower A-arm, the front of it is actually out further than the rear to keep the geometry the same as per the original Miata. Then when you come around over here, you can see the whole hub and upright all bolted back all together. You can see we have the shock in place and our tabs welded to that bar that I was talking about. And you can see a bracketry made up here that mounts the shock and also ties the upper and lower frame rails together.